good enough. I don't look good enough. And we're all so, always so consumed with the way that we look or the way that we act or the way that we feel, trying to portray a certain image of ourselves that isn't actually ourselves. It's who we are at that moment, but it's not who we are as a human being. So when we talk about success, again, we have to ask ourselves, what's our definition of success? As a result of, and I wouldn't say that, that social media alone has the, is the culprit of, of the disorders that we have, but we do live in an age when we could say that the amount of effort that we put into social media, into representing ourselves, isn't, it's, it's, it's having an impact on our being. When you look at, for example, statistics on obesity, on depression, on the number of people, both young and old, that lack a sense of direction, on people with low self-esteem, which is very hard to put a statistic beside because it's hard to tell someone's personal self-esteem, but the amount of people that are now turning to becoming more materialistic in the way they see life, anxiety amongst adults, stress, peer pressure amongst young people, and then amongst adults, divorce and suicide. The statistics are alarming. Whether it's connected directly to social media is arguable, and obviously it's not solely connected to one thing. There's a multitude of factors. But the fact of the matter is, is that we live in a time when the statistics linked to suicide, to depression, to anxiety, to these sorts of ailments, these sorts of disorders, these sorts of feelings and sensibilities is unprecedented. If we recognize that, we should also recognize that the repercussions of these things are real. And what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example. In America, I'm, I'm from Canada, but when we say Canada, we say North America because we, Canadians often feel like we're American almost. When you look at the statistics alone in the Muslim American community, and I'll share an example from home, for me. A study that was done of Muslim Americans in America found that the divorce rate amongst Muslim Americans is 31% today. 31% is one in three Muslim couples. 31% is a lot of young Muslims and older Muslims that are getting divorced. One Imam that was quoted in this study said that our Ummah is in a mess when it comes to marriage. And another one said, another Imam said, divorce is rampant, in his word, rampant in our community. This is startling, especially because, yes, we can say divorce is rampant in all communities, sure. But in Muslim communities, in a community where we begin to pride ourselves on the fact that we have a larger purpose in life, that tawfiq for us means something greater. We have more and more people that are unable to find ways to keep marriages together, or to even get married at some times, because we have a lot of young people that, for many reasons, a lot of things like I already mentioned, are having a difficult time just making sense of where they want to be in life. American statistics also show that suicide claims more lives in America than war, murder, and natural disasters combined. Suicide. I myself had a mentor of mine, a father of four, take his life a year ago. Very difficult to live through. When you start to look at young Muslim Canadians, he was in his early 40s. And for multiple reasons, none of us were able to see the signs, and he took his life. And I'm sure that these sorts of things are happening here, as well as they're happening in other places. So I'm sure there's a level of generalization that we can make to recognize that we need something different. And when you talk about suicide, and, and similar to the friend of mine who took his life, we find that those who commit suicide, 50% of them are people who suffer from a major amount of depression. And the only reason, I shouldn't say the only reason, but one of the reasons that we would feel depression is because there's something in us that hasn't, that hasn't fit, it hasn't found its place in terms of why we're here and what our purpose is and what Allah wants from us when we think about Tawfiq. And that lack of sense of direction can affect us in many different ways as I mentioned. 
What we need to do, I think, and what I'm hoping to 